Your client is going to become a witness. Your client needs help preparing for that deposition. I think many times lawyers forget what a foreign experience it is for a layperson to have their deposition taken, especially a person who hasn't given testimony before. It takes time to prepare the witness for a deposition, and you have to fight for the time that you need with that witness to make sure they're adequately prepared. I think there's two aspects to preparing a witness for deposition. First, the substance, the substance of the testimony, and then getting them familiar with the procedure. What can they expect in terms of the process in the deposition room? Let's start with the substance, which is where I usually start when I prepare a witness for deposition. I want to make sure that that witness has an overview about what the case is about. And in addition to an overview about what the case is about, I want the witness to have an understanding about what their role is. If they're peripheral in the case, I want them to understand that. On the other hand, if they're an important witness, I need them to understand that as well. If it's a peripheral witness, in terms of preparing for the substance, it's probably not going to take so much time. But if it's an important witness, if it's a witness who you're going to have to rely on at trial to be a storyteller for your client, that witness needs to be prepared to tell that account, to tell that story in the deposition because it simply won't work for the witness to say at deposition they don't recall things and then suddenly at trial they're on the witness stand and they recall the whole story, things that they didn't remember in their deposition. You'd be surprised how often we encounter lawyers who think it's perfectly fine if a witness at deposition doesn't know, doesn't remember things, as if that's the whole exercise in a deposition to contain the sharing of information. That absolutely will not work It'll be very damaging to the case if that witness needs to be relied on at trial to give your client's account of the events. Now in preparing a witness, especially someone who's going to be important in terms of carrying water at the trial and giving the client's account, it may be necessary to refresh that client's recollection. It may be necessary to show them documents. It may be necessary to read them their testimony. I like to begin with the witness's own account. What do they remember themselves when they first meet with me? Because that is their home base. That's where they're anchored. And I want to hear what, where their home base is and then work with that. They also obviously need to understand the things that they will be asked at deposition. We need to go over that with them. And you'll know that. You'll know that from other depositions. You'll have the hits, what we call the hits, when there have been name searches in the prior transcripts where that witness's name will have come up. You will have the witness's documents, documents that they authored, received, or copied on, or where their name is mentioned. So you'll know they'll likely be asked about that. And you want to show them these materials and ask them, what will they say? What do they recall about this? What's their explanation? Do they agree or do they disagree? You know, sometimes the answers are not ideal from the standpoint of the case that you have in mind that you hope to put on. And you can probe the witness's testimony, see if there's something that they've forgotten, see if maybe there's some room for them to appreciate something that they hadn't appreciated before. But ultimately, you have to live with that witness's testimony. The last thing you ever want to get the witness to have any idea that you expect them to say anything other than what they know to be the truth. That cannot happen. I always ask a witness, who have they spoken to about the case? Who have they spoken to about the fact that they're being deposed? And I caution the witness that between the time of the preparation and the time their deposition is taken, they shouldn't speak to anyone else about their testimony or about the deposition itself or about the events. Many times witnesses are asked at their deposition, did you meet with lawyers to prepare for your deposition? And it's surprising how often witnesses are kind of uncomfortable to admit that they actually met with a lawyer and were prepared on their testimony. They need to get comfortable with the idea that the answer to that is, of course, yes, you met with lawyers. There's nothing wrong with that. We also ask the witness about all documents concerning the matter that they're aware of. Documents will have been collected in advance, but sometimes in the process of preparing a witness for deposition, you'll also learn about the existence of other documents. I always ask about 
What documents are they aware of? I ask about, are they aware of any documents that were destroyed? Because you want to know that. Witnesses are always asked, have you done anything to prepare documents to be produced to me, being the, the other side, the, the adversary's lawyer? And a lot of times witnesses, especially senior people in corporations, won't know that lawyers have gone through their, uh, their computer, their drives, and have collected documents. They need to be educated on that, they, to say that, for example, you know, I understand lawyers went through my files and collected documents for this case, although there's no reason for them to know the detail. You want to show them any document that you expect the other side might show them in their deposition. Because, and this is kind of a mantra about the deposition preparation and your goal, there should be no surprises at the deposition. The goal is any document that that witness sees at the deposition, any question the witness is asked or any subject matter that is brought up in the deposition, they will have seen in deposition preparation, you will have gone over it with them in advance. No surprises. In addition to talking about the substance of the testimony and what the case is about, the witness needs to get comfortable with the procedure. The witness needs to understand that there will be questions, there will be answers, that they will be videotaped, there will be objections. I mean, I, I want the witness to understand what the process looks like. And if it's going to take place, if the deposition will be in my office, I'll take the witness into the conference room and actually show them the chairs. This is where you will sit. This is where I will sit. This is where the court reporter will be. This is where the opposing counsel who will ask you questions will be. I want them to understand that procedure. An important point I also want them to understand is that the witness is in control of the deposition. A lot of witnesses think, well, this is the lawyer's game. You know, I'm at the mercy of the lawyer who's going to grill me with questions. But the reality is, the witness is in control. The lawyer can't go on to the next question until the witness has understood the prior question and given it an answer. So I want that witness to understand they really are in control. They should listen to the question, make sure they understand it. If they need a little time, take a little time to think about it, and then answer the question. Another important thing I tell witnesses they shouldn't volunteer information. You know, they shouldn't try to be helpful. Even if they know what the lawyer wants or where the lawyer is headed, don't anticipate. Make that lawyer do the work and ask the question. This is not like an ordinary conversation. In ordinary, everyday conversation, if you see a transcript of two people talking, it's a bunch of sentence fragments that go back and forth as people anticipate what the other person is asking about and will fill in the blanks and volunteer information. That's not what a deposition is about. You don't want to do that. You want to answer the question to be sure, but you don't want to be unnecessarily helpful. And, and maybe for obvious reasons, sales and marketing people I have found have a particular problem complying with this because by nature, they want to be agreeable and they want to be helpful and sometimes they require extra work. I tell witnesses that, look, in your deposition, you're not at bat. You can't win the case in the deposition by volunteering information, or trying to persuade the other lawyer, but you can lose it. You know, another important rule is the witness needs to listen to the question and answer the question that's asked. They need to make sure they actually, they do understand the question. If there's any doubts about whether they understand the question, by all means, tell the questioner to repeat the question, or ask for an explanation, say you don't understand it. They need to be particularly wary of efforts on the part of the questioner to summarize their testimony. So, for example, the questioner may ask, well, Mr. Jones, as I understand what you've told me, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, and that's about it, correct? And the witness needs to understand that unless they can accept every single statement in that question, they need to fight that off and say, well, that's not quite right, or I agree with part of that. But they shouldn't just agree with an effort to summarize the testimony. They need to understand what a leading question is, and need to understand if they answer yes to a summary 
of testimony or a highly leading question, then they are accepting and endorsing every proposition contained in the question. Another important rule is that uh, witnesses shouldn't guess, they shouldn't speculate, they're under oath, they're there to testify as to what they know. And in the context of sworn testimony in the deposition, what one knows is different than what one knows in ordinary life or what one thinks one knows. It's perfectly okay, if you don't know the answer, to say you don't know. And for some reason, maybe the reasons are obvious, members of senior management who are used to having a lot of responsibility and taking responsibility don't think they should say, I don't know. And they need to be prepared to understand, if you don't know, it's perfectly okay, in fact, it's required in the deposition that you say you don't know. In the deposition, they're going to be shown documents. And I always tell witnesses, you know, the first thing you should do when you're shown a document is to read the document. The questioning lawyer will expect you to do that. So don't start to answer questions until you've actually read the document. And a question that's almost always asked when they're shown a document is, have you seen this before? And they need to understand answering that question, have you seen this before, that can have a special meaning in the context of a deposition. Because if a witness can identify a document or say they've seen it before, then maybe a foundation has then been laid that they can fairly be questioned about the document. So if they're asked, can you identify this document, they need to look at the document and ask themselves, have I seen this before? Do I really know what this is? And even if they think they know what it is or they recognize the format of the document, if they haven't actually seen it before, if they can't actually identify it, they should answer the question, no. And that, in most instances, will end the examination on that document. If they say, I can identify it, then it's fair to ask the, the witness about the, about the document. But they need to do a gut check at that point and ask themselves, do I really know what this is, and not speculate as to what it is. Another important question is that witnesses will be asked uh, frequently is, does seeing this document refresh your recollection? Which is kind of a strange phrase that you never hear out unless you're talking to lawyers or you're testifying. And they need to understand what does that mean when you're asked, does seeing this document refresh your recollection? And that means that having reviewed this document, do you now remember something that you did not remember before? And if reviewing the document doesn't cause them to remember something that they hadn't remembered before, then the answer to that question should be no. A mistake witnesses sometimes make is to say, I don't recall, when what they actually mean is, that didn't happen. For example, they might be asked about a board meeting that happened five years ago. They don't really recall the details of what was discussed, but they may be asked, well, do you recall that it was said at that meeting that we are going to steal our competitors' trade secrets? And because of the hazy memory and the passage of time, they may say, I don't recall. When what they really mean is they know perfectly well that was never said. Because if it was said, they would have remembered that. The danger is, if you say, I don't recall, and then somebody else in that room says, well, that's exactly what was said, that we will steal our competitors' trade secrets, then the deponent is neutered. If the deponent says the record testimony is, I don't recall, the witness won't be able to say that didn't happen. And so if the witness knows that something didn't happen, the witness has to be prepared to say that. That I know that didn't happen, or if that happened, I would have remembered it, and that didn't happen. I don't recall when you know something didn't happen isn't an adequate answer. Another thing uh, witnesses have to be prepared on is not to be influenced by the questioner's personality. You know, questioners come in all types of personalities. They may try different personalities out on the witness in the context of the same deposition. They may be friendly. They may be aggressive. They may be sarcastic or snarky. They may appear befuddled and say, help me out. The witness understands that and should assume that Everything the lawyer does in terms of modulating his personality or approaching the witness is calculated. And they need to just 
take that lawyer's personality out of the equation. Assume that at all times that opposing lawyer is doing everything he or she can to take money out of your pocket or out of your employer's pocket and they just need to ignore the lawyer's personality altogether. The witness needs to understand that there will be objections and they need to understand of course that you're going to go ahead and answer the question and that the, the objections will later be ruled on by the judge if use is ever sought to be made of the witness's testimony. But the witness needs to be cautioned, you know, don't just parrot the objection. Some witnesses think, well, the objection's a tip-off, and if the lawyer says something's vague and ambiguous, then there's no way I'm ever going to understand the question myself. And that's just not credible. That starts to look like the witness is being an advocate himself or herself and not being honest. They need to go ahead and answer the question, by all means, if they don't understand it, if they seem to have the same problem that the lawyer did, they should speak up and say that. They're not going to answer the question, of course, if privilege is asserted. And then I tell the witness, you're going to, there'll be no mystery or, or doubt about that. I will instruct you not to answer the question. And if I instruct you not to answer the question, you're not to answer it. I tell the witness, anytime you need to take a break, you know, we can take a break at any time in the deposition. It's preferable not to take a break between the time a, a, a question is asked and the time the witness answers the question because then it looks like the witness needed to talk to the lawyer in order to come up with an answer to the question. We'd much prefer not to do that. But other than that, at any time if the witness needs a break, then we take a break. And I will insist on that in the room if there's any resistance. If the witness ever realizes or thinks they realize that they've said something that's not accurate in the deposition or if they want to change their testimony, I tell them, don't try to do that on the fly. Let's talk about that over lunch or in a break. And if the, de if the testimony needs to be corrected, at the right point in the deposition, we'll go back and make the correction. But don't try to do that on the fly. After we've gone through the substance and the procedure with the witness, the last thing I like to do with the witness is actually videotape the witness practicing. And, and we'll go through a process that we call black hatting. We'll have another lawyer in our firm, preferably someone who the witness doesn't know, hasn't seen before, will be a stranger to the witness, just like the questioning attorney will be in the deposition, to come in and ask all the tough questions of the witness and go through the process so the witness actually is on the receiving end and sees what it's like and videotape that so the witness can then see how they appear, how they answer questions, what their body language is. The whole point of this, of course, is to make corrections, if corrections need to be made and how the witness sort of deports themselves, but it's also to build the witness's confidence. We want that black hat session to be more difficult and tougher for the witness than the deposition itself is ever going to be. We want the deposition to be easier than the prep. Again, building the comfort of the witness and making sure there are no surprises in the deposition. As a lawyer, there are few things more painful than sitting next to your witness or your client at a deposition and sitting on pins and needles because you don't know what's going to come out of the witness's mouth. That is one of the hardest things you can do as a lawyer. On the other hand, there are few things easier than sitting there at a deposition representing a well-prepared witness where there's very little for you to do. But when defending a deposition, whether you will have a painful day or an easy day will be decided in the preparation. If you prepared the witness well and give them the help they need to give their best evidence, it will more likely be an easy day and not a painful one.